Hello Year 9. In the last lesson you should have completed the topic test for Chapter 10, that's all the work on equations. So in this lesson we're going to have a look at the My Practice section. Check your class charts because your teacher may have already sent you some feedback suggesting what areas you look at. But I'm going to have a quick review of what we've got here. So the My Practice section starts on page 194. We've got section 10a which was on linear equations. So if you need to do any practice on that, have a look at these on linear equations. I'm not going to do any of those because they're relatively straightforward. Apart from that one, maybe. Question, the second section, 10b, is the first part of simultaneous equations. That's the part where we have got all, we can find a pair of coefficients that are the same. So for instance, in this one, you can see that the coefficients of y are the same. So that will be a matter of subtracting one from the other to eliminate y. And the same on this one, the a's are the same. So there's a th each, each one is 3a, so I would subtract there to eliminate a. On this one, the n's, just look at the actual size of the number. The n, the coefficient in front of the n is the same. So I'm going to eliminate n, but because one's plus 3n and 1 subtract 3n, I'm going to add the two equations to eliminate n. So they're the most straightforward type of simultaneous equations you can get. If we move on to question section 10c, this is looking at the simultaneous equations where you don't have um, a pair of coefficients that are the same. So if I looked at this, part a, the coefficients of x are 5 and 3, not the same. The coefficients of y are 1 and 2, not the same. So before I can add or subtract to eliminate the x or the y, I'm going to have to change at least one of those equations. So I'm going to do one of those for you. I'm going to do 4f. So here's 4f. So I can see the coefficient of s is 6 here and negative 12 there. And here it's the coefficient of t is 12 here and 6 here. I'm, I'm going to eliminate t. So that one stays the same and this one needs to be twice as big. So that equation stays as 6s take 12t equals 1. And this one, once I've times it by 2 becomes negative 24s add 12t equals 8. So I'm eliminating t, one's positive, one's negative. Oh, well, I'm adding 12t here and taking away 12t there. So if I add both of those equations together, so that's equation 1 and equation 3, then I will eliminate t. So I have 1 add 8 on the right, which is 9, and on the left, 6 add negative 24s is negative 18s. So I end up with s is equal to 9 over 18, and I'm dividing by a negative number, so the whole thing is negative. So s is equal to negative a half. Not a very nice answer. So substituting then into, what shall I go into? Well, I need to find t. t is positive here, so I'm going to substitute into equation 2. So substitute into 2, which gives me negative 12 times by s, which is negative a half, plus 6t is equal to 4. Oops. Negative 12 times negative a half is plus 6, so 6 adds 6t is equal to 4, which means that 6t is equal to negative 2, and t is equal to negative 2 sixths, which simplifies to t is equal to negative a third. So not a very nice answer for that one. Moving on to section 10d. These are where you construct the equations. So we, 
If you remember how to do these, we need to make sure we've read the question to work out what it is we need to find. Once we know what we've got to find, we um, define the variables and then we create our equations. And only then do we set about solving them. So I'm going to do 5C as a reminder. So at half term, two groups of students and teachers set off on school trips. 71 people on the year 9 trip just fill three minibuses and five cars. Whilst 33 people on the sixth form trip fill one minibus and four cars. How many people can each type of vehicle hold? So there's my question. How many can each type of vehicle hold? So I want to know how many people in a minibus, how many people in a car. So they're my variables. Right, so just for a bit of a change, instead of using X and Y, I'm going to let M be the number of people in a minibus and C be the number of people in a car. So my first one said, let's find the question again, three minibuses, so the year nine trip, three minibuses and five cars. Three minibuses and five cars was 71 people. There's my equation one. And my second one there, one minibus for the sixth form, one minibus and four cars, and that was 33 people. That's equation two. So I like section four, compare the coefficients, none of them are the same. I've got to change one. The simplest one to do is I'm going to multiply this bottom one by three. So the coefficient of M is the same, so I can eliminate M. So this one doesn't change. This one, I'm gonna take equation two and I'm gonna multiply it by three. So that's still three M plus 5c equals 71 and this one becomes 3m plus 12c equals 99. <coughs> so still equation one, now I've got an equation three. As I said, I've already set out to eliminate m. So take away equation one, three, 3m take away 3m nothing, 12c take away 5c is 7c, 99 take away 71 is 28. So divided by 7, C is equal to 4. Which tells me there are 4 people in the car. No surprise there. So back into equation 2 is the easiest one to do. So substitute into 2. And I get M, because I still need to find that plus four lots of C, so four lots of four is equal to 33. M plus 16 is equal to 33, so M is 17. Which tells me there are 17 people in a minibus. I've solved my equations. Now I need to finally write down the answer to the problem. The problem said, how many people does each type of vehicle hold? So a minibus, holds 17 people and a car holds four people so there's my answer to the, pro to the problem okay <coughs> that's about as difficult as it's going to get for, for simultaneous equations the only extension that you will get on a simul for simultaneous equations are where the numbers get really not very nice. So you get negative fractions, negative horrible fractions. You could get fractions as your original coefficients. So that will be the extension. But there is, uh, there's nothing really like that. And if you want to have a quick look at anything, some additional ones like this, have a look at my maths. Um, my maths search code 1236 and choose a few parts from questions 1 and question 2 on the homework. Moving on to the graphical solutions. 
Now there were none of these on the test, which is a shame. So if you know you needed a bit more practice with these, have a go at these. The first one's already drawn for you, so that's dead straightforward. The second one isn't. The second one, it says solve graphically these simultaneous equations. So if they've just been drawn for you, you if just been written for you, you have to draw the equations as straight lines. Remember that the best way to do this is looking at the coordinates where they cross the different axes. So on that first one, if I've got y is equal to 5x minus 2, crosses the y-axis at x equals 0. So that will be x is equal to 0, y is equal to 5 times by nothing, take away 2, which is negative 2. And this one here, oh, and it crosses the x-axis. y is equal to naught so that would be nothing is equal to 5x minus 2 so 5x is equal to 2 and x is equal to divide both sides by 2 that's 2 fifths or 0 0.4 which means crosses the y-axis at negative 2 and the x-axis at 0.4 you plot those two points put your ruler on it and draw your straight line okay so those are my two points negative 2 on the y-axis 0.4 on the x-axis join up with your ruler and you'd have to do that for the second one as well. Okay, and then we moved on to inequalities. So just to remind you then that when you use doing inequalities, if you are drawing inequalities on a number line, you need to remember the difference between that, which means not included. So that would be that or that. And if I am including it, so that symbol is associated with that and that. All right. And then the inequalities and solving inequalities. So a few things to remember here. They work like equations for the most part, apart from where you might have to multiply something like this. I've got to, if I want to find x, I need to divide both sides by negative 5. If I divide something by negative 5, then the sign of the answer changes and the direction of the inequality sign changes as well. So if I was to do this one, negative 5x is less than 20. I'm dividing by negative 5. So that becomes 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. So that's gone from a positive to a negative. So this changes from less than there to greater than there. So that's possibly the most difficult it's going to get. Although there is a nice extension that you could do for inequalities. So we've seen this type of equation where we do the same to both. So we've got unknown both sides, we've got brackets both sides, we do the same to both sides just like we would do in an equation. And then you've seen the ones that look like this. So we take one off everything and we don't divide everything by two. And we get that. 
Well, there is a lovely extension which you can do, which I'll tell you where in my mat it is in a moment, which is this. This time I've got three parts, but I've also got unknowns on all three parts. And the way to do this is to split it up. First of all, I'll look at this. And I just look at that inequality. X plus 20 is less than 8x minus 1. And find an answer for that. So, collecting all the x's on the right hand side. 20 is less than 7x. Take 1. Then getting the x's by themselves by adding 1 to both sides. You get that. And so x is going to be bigger than 3. So that part tells me that x is bigger than 3. I'll then look at this. The other bit. 8x minus 1 is also less than 5x plus 17. So I do exactly the same thing. I'm going to solve this one. <coughs> Take away 5x from both sides to collect them on the left. 3x minus 1 is less than 17. 3x then is less than 18. x is less than 6. So if I look at this on a number line, this part tells me that x is bigger than 3. This part tells me that x is less than 6. <coughs> Which means then that x must be less than 6 and also bigger than 3. So it's that what's known as a closed interval. You've got a finite set of solutions there. So it's continuous between 3 and 6. Here's a slightly different one. But it's done in exactly the same way. So starting with the 2 on the left. x plus 19 is less than 4x plus 4. Working through that solution, I get x is greater than 5. And then the other one, 4x plus 4 is less than 2x plus 4. So 2x plus 4 is less than 4. 2x is less than zero which means x is less than zero so looking at what that looks like i've got nothing and i've got five so x is bigger than five and x is less than nothing so this time my interval is not continuous so i've got to write this as two separate parts because it's not continuous i can't write it like this I've got to write x is less than 0 and x is greater than 5. This is a skill that you'll come back to a GCSE when you start looking at things like quadratic inequalities. OK, so that about covers everything. The last section here is trial and improvement. This is possibly less important than making sure that you're good at the simultaneous equations and the inequalities really but if you want to do some work on this the best ones to do are the ones where you have to create and solve your own equations so you're practicing creating equations as well so for instance like question number 10 and question number 12 if you are doing any of these don't do anything that is more than one decimal place so certainly don't do b Obviously, if your teacher's given you specific ones to do, then do those. Oh, I was going to tell you about the inequalities extension. So if you want to do the inequalities extension, that's this type. You want my maths 1162. And on the lesson... So it's lesson pages eight and nine or homework 
question 2b if you want to have a go at that okay and i'll see you at the next lesson hope this is useful